Aloha, everybody. Hey, thank you for having me. Turn to the person on your right and say, you look good today. And then turn to the person on your left and go, ayah. I, I, I gotta I got ask you this, I just can't help myself every time when I, when I come here. I, I go, how many, how many of you have never been to Kauai? Never. Raise your hands. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is a lot. Of, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I pray for their salvation. Come and visit us when you, when you guys can, amen? Hey, so I just want to thank, uh, of course, Pastor Wayne, our senior pastor, and then uh, Pastor John Burgess, who really needs your prayers because he just let anybody come when he don't stay. <laughs> so, so please pray for, for him and the guy. But it, again, it's an honor to, to be back here. Uh, today's message is called, You Are What You Eat. And um, in, in the Bible, it says this in, in Psalms 34, 8. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And all throughout the Bible, God uses food symbolically and sometimes spiritually to give a message to us. All, you know, like Jesus takes the two loaves of Molokai bread and the five dry akule and then uh, it makes a big party, right? And then how's about in the Garden of uh, uh, Eden? In the Garden of Eden, well, Adam and Eve, the, the devil comes and puts this bait and now bite into the forbidden fruit, just one bite, separated from mankind from the true fellowship that God wanted with him. You know, if we're still in the Garden of Eden, no death. You know, no need to go to school, you're already smart. <laughs> no need to go to work, you're already rich. But just one bite, and we lost all of that. Turn to your neighbor and say, no bite. <laughs> well, we love food, right? All of us, right? Well, almost everyone, we love food, especially here in Hawaii. We love our food. It's the bridge. It draws us together. Have, you know, got to have food. Have you ever gone to a small group meeting and never have food? <laughs> That's what changed small group, yeah? <laughs> but, but yes, food is so important here in our, our culture. My, my family and food, oh my goodness. But my family is kind of like a Snickers bar. Very sweet, but planning not. I don't know if your family is like that too, but, but we are what we eat, okay? You, 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 if you just stay home and you eat potato chips, ice cream, and drink soda all day long, three times a day, right? That, you, you're going to come unhealthy, right? Obviously, right? You, that's what you're going to become. But it's what we ingest phys, uh, spiritually, emotionally, and what we take in, our, our intake, that's who we are. So it's, we got to be really careful of what we put into our lives. And always remember, taste and see that the Lord is good. Ono for our spirit. Amen? Because if we don't, oh, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, I'm going to be showing some pictures, okay? Some pictures will be coming up over here. And take a look at this, this first picture. Some of us know what that is. That is balut. Not, some of us know what that is, right? That is a Filipino delicacy. And that's what we're serving in the tent right outside after the service. <laughs> uh, take, a take a look at this next picture. That is a fried rat. <laughs> Certain places in Asia, that is some, that's a delicacy too. Now, take a look at this last clip. And uh, yeah, this one is going to be fun, you know, so. <laughs> How's that? Who wants some of that with hot rice? Now that's that centipede in a walk. Okay, and I, I had to research that, make sure that, that wasn't fake, but they said the centipede has to be alive when they put it on the high heat because when the centipede dies, it starts to excrete these uh, toxins. You know, like some fish has that ammonia smell come out. So you have to cook it while it's still alive so it be delicious. <laughs> now, what we just saw there, those pictures and that video, some people call a delicacy when we think it's gross, right? Most of us. You know, when it comes to the things of God, sometimes God looks at my life, and he goes, you know, Matt, you think that's delicious and a delicacy? 
I really think it's gross. So be careful of what you intake in your life. You know, um, Pastor John Burgess, some of you might know that before, uh, he was on Kauai for nine months before I got there. So he was there for an interim period, then he went to Seattle, and then the Big Island, and then he ends up here. So uh, I was asked by Uncle Dan Shima to go to Kauai and help Pastor John. Okay? Uncle Dan said it like this. Go help the Haole guy so the Hawaiians don't eat him up. <laughs> and he wanted me to help John to integrate into the culture easily. Okay, you know what I'm talking about? So I had to tell Pastor John, Pastor John, everything is about family over here, especially on Kauai. Everything is um, brother, sister, uncle, auntie, cuz. And then I remember one time he called a younger lady, younger than him, auntie. And I said, no, <laughs> cannot do that, cannot, cannot. That, that sister, okay? Then I told him, John, if you get anything, if you get anything here to learn this local style culture, get this, when they bring food out, whatever it is, you have to eat it. If you say no, it'd be very disrespectful. So make sure now, whatever they bring, you're gonna eat. So we're at this gathering, and I have told the host, what I've already told, John, don't forget now. Don't forget, whatever they put in front of you, you gotta eat. Do not, do not reject it, it's disrespectful. So they made a dish called bindongo. Some of us knows what, what that is, that's Filipino tripe, okay? And it, it, it's delicious, but there's another um, form of it called papaet, and that's where they take the, uh, the bile, that green bile of the, of the goat, in this case, and they break and they pour it all over the the tripe. Oh, it's a very acquired taste, let me tell you. <laughs> so they bring it out, and I'm, you know, <laughs> we're all trying to have a straight face over here. But John, don't forget now, whatever they bring, <laughs> you gotta eat it, that's disrespectful. <laughs> so they bring it, they put in front of him, and he, he gets a spoon, he puts it in his mouth, and he's like, I go, what, good, he's like, don't spit it out, bro. Or, that is just wrong. It's disrespectful, bro. Swallow that thing. So he swallows it and like. <laughs> then he goes, Matt, do you are you gonna have some? I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't need that. <laughs> That's why John and I are good friends. <laughs> I I remember Pastor Wayne gave an illustration about he was walking his dog. His dog went into the bushes and came out with a toad, a dead toad in his mouth. And uh, well, I had a similar experience with my dog, a real one. I mean, my dog, I had a part German Shepherd, brilliant, smart, I mean, excellent dog, one of the best I ever owned. He understood hand signals. Um, I didn't even chain him up or have a fence. He would know where the boundary is from the garage and not that, that kind of dog, very intelligent. But one day, he was underneath the house and I'm calling him and he wouldn't come. And I'm trying to look and it was dark. So I got a flashlight and I shined it under the house and in his mouth, was a half-dried rat, Kalihi rat. <laughs> Kalihi rat's on steroids, Samoan. <laughs> and he has it in his mouth, and he, you know, he's salivating, his tail is just like, he's like, oh, look what I got. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that putrid, decaying, disease-infested carcass in your mouth. Come here, come here. He's like, no, you, you, oh, this is good. I, I, I ain't giving it to you. So I go in the house and I get a doggy treat. You know the one look like beef jerky? Like, pretty good, you know. <laughs> right, so I go, come on, boy, come on, I got this, I got this. And come on, come on, drop that rat, let it go. But he wouldn't budge. So I wonder sometimes when God looks at me and he goes, you know, Matt, that thing in your life, that unforgiveness, that offense, that attitude, or maybe that addiction you used to have, that thing is just putrid. It is disease infested. Let it go. I have something so much better for you. My grace, my mercy, my love, my healing, my redemption. Just let it go. How many of you know that certain things in life, in food, when it comes to food, uh, combos are really good. Huh? Combo plate, 
certain combinations, right? And certain things must go together. They should go together. They go well together. Like peanut butter and? Yeah. Yeah. Stew and? Stew and rice. Should I just eat stew? <laughs> wow, we're all right. Fish and? Hoy. Oh, all the Hawaiians. Real loud, eh? But there are certain combinations of food that really shouldn't go together. They don't mix. Even though they might be good on its own, but they just don't mix. What if I get a nice tall glass of juice or soda and I pour oil inside? Yeah. That don't, right? How's about soy on your cereal? <laughs> Ketchup on your ice cream? Yeah, certain combinations, they don't mix well. And we, we're going to look further into this. I'm going to ask a leader from New Hope, Kauai. His name is Keone Garma, and we're going to further expound on this illustration. Why don't you give Brother Keone uh, a hand over here, and he's going to hey. help us with this. I'll be right back. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Hey, good morning, guys. Boy, this is a beautiful church, you know. You know, the Bible says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what the Lord has in store for those who love him. And, and as I walked around this sanctuary this morning, it's, it's quite evident that you love Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's very evident here. And uh, so with that, I came to, to, to Oahu with a couple drinks that I absolutely love. You guys like drinks? Well, well not that kind of drinks, right? It, I got a couple drinks I want to share with you this morning. The first one is, is my favorite drink is, is lemonade. You get any lemonade drinkers here? I mean, come on. People on Kauai love lemonade, right? They absolutely love I love lemonade, right? I love lemonade. My second drink that I really like is, is this drink right here. Frappuccino. Anybody like Frappuccino? Oh, come on. I know you're here, right? Frappuccino. I absolutely love Frappuccino. Oh, got to get this safety wrapper off. I love one of these. Every morning, I'll have a cup of coffee, right? So I love Frappuccino. But I also love lemonade. I love lemonade, right? Oh. But I also love Frappuccino, right? <laughs> wow. I love lemonade. But I love Frappuccino. Wow. You know, some things just don't go together, right? And sometimes, I'll be honest with you, sometimes in life, we, we, we know we love Jesus, right? Amen. We love the Lord, right? We love Jesus. But sometimes we can love our sins. Oh. You get up in the morning, and you say, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I smoke Pakalolo. <laughs> right? I want to dig into your word today, Lord. Whoa, naked people on the internet. I love you, brother. I, I hate her. And we go back and forth. And we go back and we go forth, right? And then we say this. I don't, I don't go back and forth, Keone. I don't go back and forth. But maybe there's just a, a little bit of sin. Maybe there's just a little bit of sin in our life. So, so we're 90% God, right? And just a little bit of sin. And what do we do with that? We drink it, right? That's, that's just sick, right? That's just sick. You know, some things in life just really don't go together. There's some things in our, in our spiritual walk just doesn't go with our spiritual walk. It, is, it starts to turn our spiritual life, our heart sour sometimes. So what we're going to do is we're going to call up Pastor Matt back up here. He's going to encourage us on how to get rid of that. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. 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 We love you guys. Aloha. <laughs> Give him a hand. Pray for him. 
He gonna be in the bathroom? Multiple services? I told him bring two BBDs. I made sure that he did the illustration, not me. Just kidding. I call him the Hawaiian Francis Chan. But yeah, certain things in life don't mix. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen? Well, we, we got another presentation over here. And uh, I have it uh, in front of me over here uh, a can of pedigree dog food okay, and a can of chili. And I'm, I asked someone to come and help me with this. And uh, I have a, a volunteer that will be coming out. And he's going to help me with this. And so would you go and oh, welcome this. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those who don't, what is your name, sir? Uh, I'm Elijah. Do I know you? Maybe. Okay. Uh, Why would you lie in a church service? Of course I know you. <laughs> this is Pastor John Burgess's son. <laughs> Handsome gentleman. Now, Elijah, one of us is going to be eating pedigree choice in gravy with chicken and rice. That's you. Yeah, you got that. That's all you. And we will see. But I will junk and pull with you, and the loser will indulge. Okay? Deal. Junk deal. and pull. Okay. No, I don't do rock, paper, scissors, and rock. It's junk and pull where I come from. Okay? You ready? Ready. Ooh. <laughs> well, Elijah, oh. you know that I'm not eating that. Huh? Oh, no, I'm not eating that. I've got to finish you're the message. That. So. Okay, wait. Okay, so, Elijah, how's about this? I will give you $5 if you will take a bite of that. Five bucks? Dog food, yes. Five dollars. Five dollars. No. Ten dollars. That's better, but no. Ten dollars? Uh, For what? Oh, no. Okay. <sighs> Elijah, I will give Ooh. you $25. If you eat some of that dog food. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh, no. Grab it. Some people would just fly 100, up there for 100, 100. No, no. Okay, okay. Um, should I do it? Okay. 25 bucks, I'll do it. <laughs> sure. Okay, twenty-five dollars. Wow, that's like okay. What kind of message is this? <laughs> and you gotta swallow it this time. <laughs> Just kidding. Twenty-five bucks, guys. Take after the dad, I know for sure. <laughs> Eliza, why would you do something like that? Give me 25 bucks. <laughs> well, I've been there, done that. You and I and a lot of us, we'll fall, we, you just fell into peer pressure when everybody eat it, eat it, and then you chased the almighty dollar, took a risk with John Cannapole, and did something that most people would not normally do. But that's how it is in life. When we get caught up in peer pressure of society and chasing the almighty dog. Thank you so much. Give him a good hand for helping. I can't believe he did that. Do you want to know how it tastes? <laughs> kind of rough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we've been looking at things that are kind of um, gross, right? Kind of gross for, for the beginning. Now we're going to bring out something delicious and, and tasty here. So thank you guys so much. I have in here an extra value meal.
extra value meal. Ooh, can you smell that? <laughs> you know, I believe there's a science to eating these kinds of meal, okay? Because what if I would just take the drink, drink all of the drink one time, and then take the fries and eat all of the fries one time, and then last take the quarter pound and eat all of that one time. That, that wouldn't be an enjoyable meal, right? That's kind of not right, huh? The, the process, the correct way to eat this is to first grab the quarter pounder, <laughs> take a bite of that, mm -hmm. a couple of fries, mm. <laughs> and then rinse it down, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that how normal people would do it? Oh, sorry if you guys never eat yet. <laughs> but you know where I'm going with this, huh? What if I did this? Yeah. Do not call Pastor Wayne with any complaints. Call John Burgess. <laughs> I told him to invite me back. That's what he did. I took that extra value meal, and then I did this. <laughs> Who wants to eat that now? In life, God is going to ordain a certain process, but sometimes we want to rush it and do it on our own, and that's what it tends to look like. When we're young, I'll just have sex with every, anybody I want before I get married, and we don't follow the process that God ordains in his word. I'm just going to do my own thing. Forget what God says. And then what happens is something that was once delicious is now gross. Something that was once mouth-watering is now nauseating. And then, and then if, if I said, I, I did at a youth rally and said, okay, who would drink some of this? They rushed the stage. Oh. And you know what I have to tell them? No, I will not allow you to have that. Because you see, when we eat food correctly and we take a bite and we chew on it, the, the saliva and the enzymes under our tongue come out to help break it down. It goes into our esophagus, goes into our stomach, the correct stomach acids now you know, separates the waste from the nutrients, and then it goes through our body, how it's supposed to, in the correct process. But when certain foods, this is not pureed vegetables, certain foods like this, the chemical uh, imbalance now, it's become volatile. And if you was to just down that thing, your body would reject it both ways. <laughs> That's why when I said, no, nope, even if someone wanted to, I would say no. I won't allow you to do that. That's why sometimes you young ones out there, when your parents say, I won't allow you to do that, it's because they know what the consequences could be. Most of us, when God says, no, I won't allow you to do that, that's not the correct process of what I call in steps ordained for your life. Because I know the end results can be very consequential for your health, spiritually, mentally, physically and emotionally. So you and I have to always remember, taste and see that the Lord is good. Ono for your spirit. Amen? Amen? And I'll close with this. In life, you will get a taste of a lot of different diverse spices. You and I will have the opportunity to intake and try to ingest all kinds of things around us that God may not approve of. And then when we mix certain things that shouldn't be mixed together, we don't just end up with a sore stomach, but maybe a sour spirit. And then sometimes because of peer pressure or the chasing the almighty dollar, you and I take unnecessary risk and do things we would not otherwise do on our own. And then we forget about God's process and his protocol and the way he designs steps of how we to live 
and then we just blend it up as quick as it want. We take something that was delicious and make it gross. Something that was mouth-watering, now nauseating. And God is looking down and saying, Matt, you got to taste and see what I have for you. Know that the Lord is good. I'm on for your spirit. You and I will never quench this thirst and quell this hunger in life unless we first sell out for Jesus. You and I will never come to a place of satisfaction fully, mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, unless Jesus Christ is Lord of our lives. God is saying, come, sample this. Taste and see. Ingest, intake, put into your life all that I have for you, and it'll be good. How many of you received that today? Let us pray, Pulikako, with every head bowed and every eyes closed. Maybe you're here today and he goes, yeah, I have to. I've heard about how good God is and I really need a taste of that. I might have nibbled on it, you know, took a nibble once in a while, but boy, I really got to fully ingest the goodness of the Lord. And others here, maybe God is saying, look, I told you to let that thing go already. What you're trying to ingest, might, you might think it's a delicacy. I think it's gross. You might think it's mouth-watering. I think it's nauseating. At first, you might think it's good for you, but it really isn't. I'm the only one. So if that's you today, and you want to make sure that you taste it, and you saw that the Lord is good, why don't you just lift your hand up and say, yeah, that's me today including those of us who just got to let go of things that God is asking us to let go. Lord, I give you praise for all of these hands. You can go ahead and put your hands down. Please, everyone, repeat this prayer after me and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for your son, Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and raising from the dead. I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. And I promise to serve you all the days of my life. Today, I came to see, came to taste that the Lord is good. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you. We love you. Aloha.